Hey everybody, it's Derek here with Destin and Wander, and I just wanted to take some time and kind of go through the next phase of this video production series. So I wrote down a few notes here. I recently got into bullet journaling. I'll show you guys. Right here is a bullet journal, and this has changed my life. Just kidding. I mean, it's been really good, but so basically this bullet journal has allowed me to move kind of all my thoughts, my philosophical ideas, things I'm studying, things I'm learning about into an analog domain that I can refer back to later. For me, it's been super helpful, but a lot of times I'll use something digital and easily get distracted because everything's in one place. The computer is used for multiple things and it doesn't allow us to divide up when we want to do other things. So. I recently took up bullet journaling and then I read the book Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport and that was really good and really insightful. And he's a super good writer, has a great way with words and a great way to communicate things and if you're looking for a book to read, I highly recommend it. So what's in a name? What's in the name Destin to Wander? Why does it have any meaning, any significance? Is there any value to it or is it just a made up name because it sounds cool? Part of that is because yes, I thought it sound, I thought it sounded pretty cool, but there's more of a philosophy behind the name than just sounding cool. So that'd be like two, two and a half years ago now, I had a dream about, I don't even know what the dream is about, but it was about pursuing something like meaningful and impactful with my, my brother and my best friend. Um, just trying to change people's lives and kind of making a difference in people's lives and showing them there's more of a meaning to life. I just discovered because recently I, I just converted to Christianity from being an agnostic and it kind of opened me up to see the world in a totally different way that I wanted to share with people. Now in this dream, I was thinking about that scenario where me, my brother, and my best friend were traveling the world, making documentaries, making films, making travel films, making short films and stuff for huge clients, companies, and stuff like that, so. But also providing like how-to stuff and whatnot on YouTube, but obviously things have changed and that's been two and a half years ago, but I'm still wanting to pursue Destiny Wander and I want to make it something important. And I want to relate the name, it kind of spoke to me in 1 Peter 3.15. Let me get, get my Bible real quick. All right, so update, got the Bible. Um, I wanted 1 Peter 3.15 to be kind of like how I live my life and how I pursued destiny wander and then first Peter 3:15 reads but in your hearts honor Christ the Lord is holy always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you yet do it with gentleness and respect so that verse really just kind of highlighted I want to have a defense for my faith and, and that's that's like the study with apologetics I want to have a defense for what I believe and share it with others but with the name destiny wander Loosely related to three parables in Luke chapter 15 and more so the first parable, which is the parable of the lost sheep. And we'll go there now. And the first parable is called the parable of the lost sheep in Luke chapter 15. And I'll read that now. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. And I really love that parable. All these parables are based on roughly the same theme, the lost are now found. And I kind of wanted to provide a way where we can spread and inform people 
that there is hope to be found, which is the gospel, and that we are the ones called that have found the hope to find the lost. And then in this parable, Jesus is showing that he has a concern for the outcasts and the Gentiles, those people who are not part of Israel, part of God's chosen people, which us is not being, at least me, not being of Jewish descent, is a Gentile and showing that Christ has concern for people who are not part of God's chosen people, that all people may come to him and find rest. In this parable, Jesus can be seen as the shepherd and we can be seen as the sheep. We are the ones that are led astray. We often lead ourselves out of the pasture and we are, we're sheep, we're not very smart, to put it bluntly. We're gonna be wandering and that's kind of where the name comes from, we're destined to wander. We are the sheep who are destined to wander. Apart from the grace of God, there is no health in us. So apart from us, His grace for us in drawing near to Him, we are always gonna be wandering and lost. But He is the one who runs after us, picks us up when we can't walk anymore, and says, I will bring you into my kingdom if you repent and believe in me. And there will be rejoicing in heaven for that over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Making the lost found through storytelling and filmmaking and teaching people what I've learned in the filmmaking space and community. While also dabbling in a little bit of apologetics, philosophy, stuff like that, and just kind of sprinkle here and there, you know, whatever. But, and then I'll go to the parable of the prodigal son. And that parable is just showing the redemption we can have in Christ. Nobody's beyond redemption. So it's really just providing a place where people can be found, searching for the lost and making them found, forming a community where people can be heard. John Paul II actually said it should be renamed the Merciful Father because it's more about the father and his love for his son versus the son being a prodigal and lavishly using the money from his inheritance from his father irresponsibly. Big part of this is showing like the Father's merciful love towards us. And is in verse 20. It says, And he arose and came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion, and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And that just alludes to our Heavenly Father running after us. So the Father had compassion and ran and embraced him. Our Heavenly Father is running after us wanting us to repent and turn towards him. As 2 Peter 3.9 says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. And it just shows how God's love for us and he's running after us and he has compassion on us. He wants us to experience and feel his love for us and see how much he cares and truly wants to be in relationship with us. And then verse 24, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to celebrate. And I just kind of want to facilitate that as an opportunity for people to come to Christ and a place where people can be loved and accepted for how God made them. And uh, I also want to make this place an open community where we can talk about disagreements and things we may not all agree on. That would be great too. I, I love learning learning more, learning more about other perspectives and ideas, and always open and engaging people in the comments with that, so. When we come to the Father with a contrite heart, knowing that we have sinned, He will forgive us. So with that, that's kind of my idea behind the name. I know it's not fully fleshed out, and I didn't really write a script for this or anything, just kind of off the cusp and some notes and verses and whatnot, but at the end of the day, we are all destined water. God has provided a path for redemption for us. But also I want to share like the beauty of storytelling, filmmaking, and form a community around that. I'm not too concerned about the technical aspect inside of that. There's already too many YouTubers that do product and tech reviews and I'm just kind of tired about that part of YouTube because it's just selling a product. I don't care about that. I want to provide a place where people can be loved and cared about and we can share our stories and tell stories. I truly just want to make a difference telling one story at a time. Sharing our adventures and what we do on the channel with others and teaching you guys what we have learned 
in telling stories and just trying to live life to the fullest and making a difference with connection and community in people's lives. Um, if this video helped you think about what you want to do or a purpose or an intention you want to pursue and you want to show your support, consider leaving a like, uh, leave a comment and tell me your favorite thing you learned from this video and one thing you think we can improve on in this video. And leave a thinking face emoji in the comments if you made this far so I, so I know you're a real one at the end of the video. With that being said, we're destined to wander. I love you guys. I care about you guys. I just want to share the hope that is in me, just like 1 Peter 3.15 says, and just see the work of God done on earth. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. And uh, that'll wrap this video up. I appreciate your support and engaging with us. Um, Till next time, see you later.